Hey guys, welcome back to another Freaky Fast Friday episode where we give you the scoop on a case in 30 minutes or less. So sit back, make yourself a drink or a cup of tea, and join us for this week's episode. Hi guys, welcome back to the podcast. Um, This week we are talking about a disappearance case. Um, Phoenix Coldone, Phoenix was a 23-year-old woman from Spanish Lake, Missouri, who went missing on Sunday, December 18th, 2011. She left her parents' home in her black 1998 Chevy Blazer around 3 p.m. after they had returned from church, and she never came back. Um, The I found Phoenix's case. I was looking on, like, Reddit threads of, like, unsolved disappearances and stuff, and this was... This is a pretty well-known one. Well, it wasn't. In terms of... It wasn't originally because it wasn't really... Uh, popular until they made an oxygen special about mm-hmm. it and then um, it kind of blew up and then everyone that, knew about it and yeah. it was kind of like this common household well, name well yeah. and like uh the podcast vanished or it's yeah. called the vanished oh, yeah. so not up and vanished but that's a different one yeah it's called the vanished they did like a okay podcast cool. on yeah. this um but at the time like it didn't get as much popularity as it should have i feel like and I mean, let's be honest, it was because she was a black woman. Yeah. But um, her parents actually, like, were really, like, adamant in comparing it to Natalie Holloway. Anyway, she was on national news, like, the day she went missing. Um, Because America is racist. Deeply, deeply it's rooted like, in it's racism. It's more of like a very like subtle thing. It's the the white missing woman bias or whatever yeah. it's called. Yeah. Anyway, so Phoenix was raised in a very religious household. Um, she was homeschooled most of her life. She she was really smart and like really interested in school. She played guitar, violin, piano. Um, she was like the local fencing champion. Oh, so uh, cool. one of the main pictures I found of her was like of her in her like fencing, fencing outfit. Wow. Oh, cool. Uh, her friends and family would say she was also pretty religious herself, um, just based on her upbringing. She definitely wasn't as religious as her parents, and it seems like as she grew up, she was trying to kind of like find herself. Yeah, sort or of. just like trying to decide if she was religious because she felt strongly about that or, or just because if it was because her parents pushed on it, were pushed yeah. her pushed it on her for so long yeah um and it kind of seems that because she was raised in a religious household and probably like wasn't exposed to a lot of things mm-hmm. um she was pretty naive as a result result of this like mm-hmm. that's i don't know interesting though that kind of that sort of makes me think so just as a side note because she drove her car like she got in her car and left someplace it wasn't like she disappeared like in the middle of like i don't know just like a crowded area she like Mm -hmm. drove her car and left makes me feel like she like ran away or something or went somewhere and maybe something went wrong well i mean let's not get too hasty in making like I don't know. That's because I mean we're like I've barely gotten through any. Okay, of Okay, give me more, Caitlin. Um, but I mean those are good thoughts. Like she did, she, she like did willingly made house. a choice to leave the house. Yeah, is what and, I'm like, saying, I guess. Yeah. Um, so um, let's like kind of back up a little bit and get some like information leading. Okay, Sarah, I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> it's distracting me. Okay. It's Sorry. distracting me too. That's like every time you do it, even though I know that. Th- this can't hear it i can hear it (laughs) um so yeah let's get some like background information on like the months leading up to her disappearance so about a month before phoenix disappeared she made um like a selfie video in her car like using her like front facing camera on her phone Mm -hmm. okay um the audio is pretty funky like some of it's really good and then some of it her parents actually like, paid somebody to kind of, like, fix, like, an audio engineer to, like, fix so they could hear it better. Interesting. Um, My guess is she's probably at some point covering up the microphone. That's what I think. That happens to me all the time. So does that a lot. Like, like, literally literally every time I ever talk to anybody. We'll be on FaceTime, and you will constantly cover the mic up with your finger. I think I just naturally hold my phone like that. So, Phoenix, I understand. (laughs) 
Also, I want to throw out, not that you're, like, worth more if you're, like, really beautiful, but, like, I looked her up and, like, she's, she's gorgeous. a gorgeous person. So, yeah, and that's why I think her parents that compared it. That's why I think her parents compared it to Natalie mm-hmm. Holloway, because she's also, like, a beautiful woman. And it, it, it's, like, why didn't these this, again, not that you have to be beautiful to have anybody I care just, about you, but, like, why didn't they get equal amount of coverage? But it also, like, rules out the, oh, this woman's more beautiful, which is why she was in the media more, and, like, resorts it back to, oh, probably, like, just underlying the United racism States is, is racist. the reason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, in the video, uh, at one point, she can be heard saying, quote, Lord, please help me accept the things that won't change and that I won't change the things that I can't change, end quote. Um, this is like, she's probably kind of ad-libbing part of the surrender yeah, prayer. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Like, sounds- it's more or less like, I think the line that I remember from the serenity prayer is like, help me accept the things that I can't change. And to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Yeah. It's something. in a Macklemore song. Um, so at another part of the video, this is the part that, um, I think this is part of the video that they had to like have an audio engineer kind of help make it less staticky. Um, you can hear her saying, uh, quote, I just want to be happy, man. I can't remember a time when I was happy, genuinely happy. I feel so stupid because I let myself go a little bit. I probably would have been in a better situation if I would have stuck with how it used to be. Weird. End quote. Um, what does that mean? Yeah, she seems like, so as far as I know, you can't find this video anywhere. The orig- the police only originally released part of the vi- video anyway. Right. Um, so Phoenix had, in the months leading up to her disappearance, began kind of like carving a space in her life that she hadn't really like explored before. Mm -hmm. Like she was kind of trying to live separately from her parents. Um, I mean like a typical thing for like a 23 year old woman to do. So, well, yeah. And like she, she's almost done with college at this point and she, she had moved out of her parents' house. They had like helped her rent an apartment, but they found out that her roommate was actually her boyfriend (gasps) Uh, and dun, dun, dun. they got really upset. Yeah, from like a highly move, religious family. Made her move back yeah, home. That so. could be bad. Yeah. Um, yeah, her boyfriend's name is Michael, by the way, for future reference. She actually had not enrolled in the next semester of college. So she was, seems like she was planning on dropping out. It didn't, but she was acting like she wasn't. Like she was just taking some time off. Yeah, well, no, like she didn't tell anybody that she was planning on dropping out, especially her parents. Her parents didn't seem like they knew that. But it also didn't seem like she shared a lot of things with her parents. Right. She was, I mean. Especially, so to me, if she was really sheltered in high school, went to college, probably did some stuff in college that her parents want to have approved yeah. of. Mm-hmm. And so she probably, once she went to college, because she was so sheltered as a child, which that's just a life lesson, mm-hmm. um, not to shelter your children, um, she probably h- hid a lot of things from her parents. So classical music had kind of always been her forte. She pl- Remember, she played, like, the violin, mm-hmm, the guitar, yeah. the piano. Um, but she had, I guess, recently, according to some reports, started listening to, like, rap music. Which, let's be clear, like, that means absolutely nothing for somebody's personality, but it seems like she was definitely trying to, like, even if it was, like, a very forceful thing, maybe it seems like she was trying to, like, forcefully do something different than she normally did, just for, like, the sake of being Again, very typical, I feel like, for a child who was highly sheltered and then went away to college. So, this is not at all unusual to me yet, so I'm... So Phoenix's friend Akira Hogan said that she had started carrying a knife for self-defense and she had been arguing with her parents a lot more than she was normally, Um, basically from the time that they made her move back home because Mm -hmm. they found out she was... Right. Like, that's kind of... she Because it's my understanding she was very polite and, like, well-mannered when it came to, like, doing what her parents wanted her to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but not She never really, case. like, fought it before. Yeah, and her friend Akira said that she kind of had started, like, rebelling a little bit more than normal. I mean, as much as you can technically rebel as a 23-year-old woman, like... Um, she also told her friend Akira that she thought somebody... Or she thought, quote, something was out to get her. She did say something. Interesting. That's what Akira relayed to... Um, like investigators yeah i think this was an oxygen interview that i was reading something Um, 
The knife uh, in question was not found in her belongings in the car that they found, in her car that they found abandoned. But if so, she really was concerned about, like, something coming after she her, probably had it in, like, she would pocket, take the maybe, knife with yeah. her, right? She wouldn't leave it in the car if so, she had a choice. on December 18th, um, the Colden family had just gone back from church when Phoenix went out to her car and just kind of, like, sat there. I guess her mother, Goldia, said that she would do this when she was talking on the phone sometimes. Yeah. Um, because she kind of just, like, she didn't want people listening through the walls, I guess. It seemed like she had starting to had started to be a lot more private of a person. Mm-hmm. But still, like, her mother was, like, she did it pretty often. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't super alarming for her to do that. Or unique to this specific night. Yeah, and, like, she, exactly. Like, she remembers it, but it, like, had become, like, a sort of regular thing for yeah. her to do, so... So around 2.20 p.m., um, they had just gone home from work, or they had gone home from, not work, uh, church, and her, uh, Phoenix's father, Lawrence, said that she left the driveway in her car, um, and he assumed she was going to, like, a friend's or the convenience store, because she didn't really say anything, so he assumed she'd be, like, right back. Yeah. Um, hours later, her car was found in East St. Louis, um, this is around 25 minutes from her home. Uh, this is actually a really rough part of St. Louis and her, um, I think you say St. Louis. It should be Louis. I think you, I think Missourians say St. Louis. Yeah, though. they St. do. Yes. Um, anyway, this is a pretty like rough part of the city and her parents like truly had no idea like who or what she would have been in that part of the city to for. See, yeah. Um, yeah. Cause they lived in like a suburb type well and that that point that kind of rolls out what what her father was saying about going to a friend's house or a convenience store because why would she have driven 25 minutes from home to go to a convenience store and also why would she have a friend in that area well yeah exactly Mm -hmm. so her car was discovered around 5 27 p.m um and was impounded at 6 23 those are that's like what the recorded times were Mm -hmm. um initially the police said that it was still running I, I can't actually find if this was true or not. I feel like that's, like, a big thing if it was still running. Um, yeah. That um, would totally, like... There was, for whatever reason, on this, like, one detail conflicting yeah. reports on that, but... I don't know. Um. So, because the car was impounded in Illinois, so, real quick, I didn't know this when I was researching this case, so, in case people aren't from this area, so, East St. Louis is in Illinois, um, and oh. St. Louis is in Missouri. Um, there, it's kind of like a similar, like Kansas City, Missouri, Kansas City. Okay, fair point. Um, Missouri apparently likes to do that. That's yeah, something. it's like <laughs> it's kind of a similar situation. Like you drive across the border and you're in a the place same called city, e- but well, not. kind of East St. Louis is like its own separate city. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so because it was impounded in a completely different state from where. She had gone missing for, from where, like, a missing persons report was. But they probably, like, weren't looking for her car in a, in a different state, you know? Right. Um, plus, it just... There's not a lot of cohesiveness across state lines in the U.S. We're not known for that. Um, yeah, there's definitely not, which seems interesting because where we live, we live so close to the Idaho border mm-hmm. that you would almost have to be, like, looking in both states because it's such a big possibility mm-hmm. To cross state lines. Mm-hmm. And sounds like the same thing happened with her. Yeah. Uh, so the Missouri police did eventually connect it to Phoenix, um, the 1998 Chevy Blazer. Uh, they discovered that her glasses, purse, shoes, ID, and a cell phone bill um, were inside the vehicle. The cell phone bill had been sent to collections. Um, long story short, she had a second cell phone that she was using that she was paying for by herself um so she had like the phone that was on her family's plan and then Mm -hmm. she had a separate cell phone and apparently it's because she was using it to communicate with a man named mike and i guess she was doing this so that like no one would find out well yeah or like and she would never even get caught okay well that would explain why she's in a completely different city if she was trying to see her man yeah well the, the weird thing is is like people don't know a lot about this mike guy like a lot of her friends that are willing to talk to the police don't know who this is interesting um red flag honestly right there so 
also like a little bit weird. There wasn't like any DNA that they could find on the car that didn't belong to um, either Phoenix or one of her parents. Okay. So um, there wasn't, that so, was like a pretty much So like she a again dead end willingly well. kind of got out of the vehicle, it seems it like. It seems because they found the car running or not, that's like a conflicted uh tidbit Piece of evidence yeah. but the door was open the driver's side door was open so yeah. she did flee in a hurry it's or somebody pulled her out when she had come to a but stop somehow got no i did find on DNA reddit on like somebody car. was like it's weird that she would have been stopped in that spot anyway because it wasn't quite to an intersection yet so it, like it seems weird she would have been stopped in that specific spot um because she but she was still in like a traffic lane you know that's like where the car was found so, overall, the police um, very much dismissed this case, like we said mm-hmm. at the beginning. Like, they kind of just assumed that she had run away. Um, and because she was 23, they are like, I mean, what... She's an adult, yeah. Yeah, they are basically like, what more do you want us to do, you know? Also, though, random thought here. Like, the only thing I can think of of when I would get out of my car and leave the door open without somebody opening the door and pulling me out, like in the middle of a road where it wasn't normal to stop is if I saw somebody that like needed help. Yeah. So I have a theory later that I'll mention. Okay. Wait on it. Okay. Um, so there also was like absolutely no evidence of foul play. Like even if they wanted to theorize about it, there's no evidence. No evidence. Right. Uh, or at least no physical evidence, which for all police's faults, I, which there are a lot, um, One of them in Missouri probably being blatant racism. Mm -hmm. Oh, for Uh, sure. They, again, there wasn't a lot of physical evidence, so I just lose my train of thought. So there wasn't, like, a lot that they could do, basically, without any, like, physical stuff. Um, I think the point you're trying to make is that police officers won't do anything without physical evidence. Yeah, Which is kind of a good thing, but, like, also in cases like this, it's like, gosh darn, I wish there was evidence. Well, and, like... I wish they could do something. Phoenix's family, like, their whole point was, like, if she was white, they probably would have, like, dragged out the dogs that day to look for her body, Uh you know? Um, So, and like I said, they compared her case to Natalie Holloway's. And I think it was, like, it was weird that they kind of just assumed that she had just kind of left on her own accord. They had just assumed that she, like... I mean, it is, so... And it's, it's, nobody, like, runs away without, like, her shoes were in the car. Well, so that's the thing. Her purse that's, was in so the car. My Even thing if is she this, wasn't planning she might on taking have, her phone. She might have left the house, like, planning to run away, but then maybe something happened because yeah. the fact that the door was open, meaning that she left in a hurry, she left all of her belongings behind. Yeah. Like, to me, that's either, like, someone pulled her out of the car or she didn't want anyone to find her and she was okay with, like, leaving all that behind and she was just going to go on and start a new life kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. That would be my only other thought. Which it um, did seem like she was kind of in, like, this internal turmoil with, like, where her life was. And yeah. if she wanted to be She in was that definitely position. at, like, a turning point in yeah. her, like, life as far as, like, what she wanted to do. And was she going to do things to make her parents happy or to make her happy? Or, um, so her parents spent their entire life savings looking for her on several different things. There was one... At one point, they spent, like, $50,000 on something that turned out to be a hoax. Like, somebody <sighs> claiming they had information, and they didn't. Um, and they actually ended up losing their home. It seems like they kind of have accepted it as, like, we would have lost everything if it meant that she would If we could have found her. Yeah, yeah, they were very passionate about finding her. Even to, like, the point of, like, being kind of naive like, in thinking that she's still alive. Right, honestly. like, having too much hope, honestly. Well, and it seems like they either genuinely didn't know that their daughter was, like, in turmoil, in internal t- turmoil, or they didn't genuinely think that, and they're kind of trying to, like, put on this picture of, like, oh, yeah, we had, like, a perfect life. What are you talking about? Like, mm-hmm. there's no way she would have run away. Like, that doesn't she make any so sense, happy. you know? Yeah. Um, some people think it's the latter. Like, they're kind of putting on a front about that, which obviously wouldn't be helpful at all for a case. No, not for the case, yeah. but for their, like, to save face, basically. Yeah. But. um, So, it became pretty obvious 
even if her parents kind of were trying to pretend it wasn't, that Phoenix can kind of had started to live like a double life. Mm -hmm. So she was like, she was still going to church with her parents. She was living with her parents. She, as far as they could tell, was being like a good Christian girl, you know? Like how she was raised. But I mean, Mm -hmm. she appeared to have two boyfriends at the time of her disappearance. Um, It seems like everybody that knew her knew that she was like kind of struggling with her identity. So an ex of her second boyfriend, Mike... So that's going to be the distinction as well. Like name Mike, her name side, Michael. her basically her side boy. <laughs> yeah, an ex of him said that he was often violent with her. Um, I don't think this was necessarily substantiated. I think it was this like lady just telling connecting an herself. interviewer. <laughs> well, she was just telling an interviewer like what her, her experience personal experience was with, with him. him. Yeah, um, and she, I guess, the ex actually confronted Mike at one point about Phoenix's disappearance, trying to see if like he knew anything. And she says that he said, quote, why are you worried about someone who is already dead? And obviously we can just, maybe he assumed that that's what See, happened and, and to her. Yeah, it's like one of those, it's like in the Maura Murray case where we're like, oh, I wish this meant something, but it yeah, doesn't. Like, it just it's kind very of is this like that he random, kind of just like, he assumed that well, she was it, dead. Yeah, then. and honestly, I, I feel like you probably would assume that she was dead, depending yeah. on how long it had been, so... Um, so the main question at this point is what brought her to that neighborhood in the first place? Like, cause that's where the pivotal moment was, right? Where we don't have anything after her parking that car there. Mm-hmm. So, um, I'm just going to lift off a couple theories. These are mostly theories that have been brought up in like news or, um, in the oxygen, uh, like series. I think it's more of like a docu, like a couple part documentary kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, So the first theory is these are in no particular order, obviously. So sex trafficking, um, somebody saw her, saw an opportunity and just plucked her out of her car. And yeah, so apparently I-70 runs through um, it runs through St. Louis and then also connects St. Louis to Kansas City, Missouri. Um, and these are two huge cities for sex trafficking, apparently. Mm-hmm. Like, this area in Missouri is, like, the sex ha- trafficking hub of the country. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, like, almost as bad as, I think, like, one of the second, one of, like, the top three is, like, the Portland area. Okay. Because um, it's, you know, it's by the water and, like, I don't know. You can, like, get them out. I guess that's kind of yeah. easily. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so many believe that due to the neighborhood that she was in, this is probably the fate that Phoenix met. Um, and this would all, also explain why they haven't found a body, but also why her phone and her credit card stopped being used. Mm-hmm. But, like, the biggest, like, hole in this theory is that she, um, it's unlikely that we would have gone this long without her managing to make contact. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm thinking. Like somehow or she would have seen her. Yeah, somebody would have seen her or she would have managed to at least like send a text or like find somebody that like could pass on along a message. So the second theory is that Fe- obviously Phoenix was murdered, um, possibly by one of her like newly found friends. And Again, none of these friends have agreed to talk to anybody. Like, none of these... I mean, it's difficult because, like... I'm assuming they're, like... Her parents didn't know any of these people. None of her, like, lifelong friends knew any of these people that she'd kind of become... Yeah, but if these are... So if these are new friends, and possibly, which I'm kind of assuming, maybe this is bad of me, that they're people of color... Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, I wouldn't want to talk to the police if I was a person of color. You yeah. know, that's kind of my yeah, thought. You that's my initial it, you thought. You could think of it there. in that perspective. Like, why sure. would, like, maybe they can't afford a lawyer. Why would they talk to the police without a lawyer? That seems stupid. Um, so number three is that Phoenix might have just run away. Mm-hmm. Like, it's entirely possible that the police were right. Like, there's no body and there's no physical evidence. That points to her 
just running away and on leaving purpose. all of her personal belongings behind like yeah because she was like this is it i'm making a fresh life and i so the phone video is like the main thing that points in th- this direction for me um especially if she was kind of paranoid like the friend had said like about somebody like following her if she become like so in her head about this like it would make sense that she would just, like, drop everything and try to, like, get as far away from whoever she thought was, like, after her. Some private investigating has revealed that Phoenix had two birth certificates. Um, One was under her, like, legal name Condon and, or Colden, sorry. And the other one was um, with her mother's man named Reeves. There, I, I believe there's, like, a good explanation for this. I'm pretty sure it's because she like had one when her father like legally adopted her. But I mean, some people think like maybe she's living under the name Phoenix Reeves. Like the things that people have pointed out about this case that should have sparked a lot bigger of an investigation is one, if the car was still running, this seems like a pretty big red flag Mm -hmm. i i did find though that apparently this is like a pretty common practice with people who like carjack cars they'll like if they're trying to like drop the car and not have anybody suspicious about it they'll like leave it running because people are like if you see a car sitting there running you're not usually even if it's in the middle of the lane sometimes like you'd be like oh maybe they're they're gonna come right back you'd like be more likely to ignore it than call it in and also i mean her purse was in there I don't know why they didn't think that was weird that there was, like, a bunch of belongings inside the car. Yeah, especially if her car was running and, like, all of her stuff was in there. Like, my first thought would be someone grabbed her and pulled her Mm. out of there. The original, like, lack of interest in the car was because of where it was. Like, unfortunately, it was in a bad neighborhood. Like, I think maybe like maybe it happened all the time. I well, and not to mention they probably impounded so many cars from this area like all the time. So they didn't think anything special. Um, I also kind of have a big problem with her. Like, neither of her boyfriends seem like they have given a lot up to the police. Like, they. And nobody, you know what they say. It's always the boyfriend. And when you have two... It's, it's weird because, like, nobody seems that concerned with where she is other than her parents and, like, her... Original Like, friends. childhood yeah. friends. Almost as though, like, they know something that we don't. Like, they yeah. knew that she was going to run like, away. And they're like, oh, if we just don't talk, nobody's going to pry. Which, up to this point, has been true. Nobody has pried, so... Jealous ex-boyfriend. Or jealous... If he boyfriend who got a side, maybe. side boy. Mm-hmm. I don't know what you call the male version of a side chick. A side dick? Oh. You could cut that out, please. Thank you. <laughs> I don't want anyone to listen to this and be like, girl. Um, I don't know. It's, it's interesting. I think people are weirded out that her parents, who she lived with, like, were like, yeah, there was, like, nothing that weird going on with her. Like, there was no red flags. Like, there's a pretty, like, eerily similar missing persons case um, out of Atlanta. Uh, Stacy English, 36, um, went missing in Atlanta on December 27th, 2011. So this is, like, right after nine days after... Um, Phoenix. This did. makes a sex trafficking and uh, uh, Stacy English likely. was last seen with a friend from St. Louis. Mm. So the original suspect in the Stacy English case was Robert Kirk, um, who was a club promoter in St. Louis. Club promoter, red flag for sex trafficking shit. Yeah. Right so there. he he has been cleared of this, and English's body has been found. <gasps> um, she died of. Like, the official cause of death was exposure. She got she had, like, hypothermia. Stacey English was discovered January 23rd, so she'd been missing, like, a little less than a month at that point. Well, and if, St. You, Louis. if you look at a picture of Stacey English, she, she's, I mean, she's a little bit older than Phoenix, but... But she's African-American? She's African-American. She's beautiful. Uh-oh. Um, like, super smiley. All the pictures you see of her, she has, like, this huge grin on her face, like... Um, the similarities are, I mean, they, their faces don't look super similar, but, like, 
But yeah, people are like, we. it's weird that he was cleared before they even found... Because Robert Kirk was cleared before they even found Stacey English's body. Apparently weird. he had an alibi, is my understanding. Which alibis can lie. Um, and I, I mean, like, most... If we're going the sex trafficking route, which the club promoter thing does go that direction Yeah, that's a me. huge red flag If we're kind me. of going with that theory those people have deep pockets to pay off police. Anyway, yeah, that kind of wraps up all we really know about Phoenix. Um, this is obviously an all unsolved disappearance. But yeah, anyway, that's our Freaky Fast Friday episode for this week, guys. Uh, as always, we appreciate you guys following along with us, supporting us, listening to the episodes. Uh, make sure to check us out on Instagram at who what Where Podcast. Um, if you're listening to the video version of this on YouTube, make sure to give us a like and comment down below. Tell your friends. Um, and we will see you on Monday. 